Hey, in the previous video, I spoke to you about how change need not be bad and how embracing change can give you happiness and fulfillment. And as promised, I'm going to show you the proof. In this video, I'm going to bring to you a high-flying corporate jet-setting executive who has given all, it, all of it up on a leap of faith and embraced change to pursue her passion. She's waiting on a call, so let's get started. Hey Aarti, thank you so much for your time and welcome to my channel. Uh, your shift from having a high energetic corporate career to that of an artist has been extremely fascinating. So tell us, how did you come about embracing such a change? I think it's a very interesting observation because, uh, you know, I mean, we always know our own journey and therefore we are able to kind of, uh, we don't see the shift that people around us see. Right? Uh, I have been um, actually painting for many, many years. And even when I was in the corporate, like working wherever I was, I was painting, maybe not as actively as I paint today because I never had that uh, bandwidth. Uh, but there was this whole desire within me that, you know, some point in my life, at least for a while, I want to just live the life of an artist. I want to see, I mean, it's so different, right? Journey started when I shifted back to Bombay. And, um, and I thought that I wanted to take it up professionally, started reaching out to people who could guide me. And then I found a, a, a mentor who could uh, make me understand the art world beyond painting, of course, over and above improving my techniques. So it was a shift. I mean, I painted for a good four or five years before I actually made this transition. Some, I would obviously think, okay, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to start painting. At what point would I do? And my husband would con constantly keep telling me, go easy. I mean, it's a, it's a huge shift. Yes. Exactly the things that you talked about, right? An extrovert surrounded by people, traveling, in, into meetings, so much of activity. And this is actually, I sit at the studio alone by myself. I mean, there are rarely any visitors. To tell you the truth, I'm an ambivert. I draw energy from my silence. That's really helped me because that's my basic personality. Maybe people outside may not be able to see it that way, but... Um, but that's the true me. But when I'm with people, I am the other way around, right? I'm an extrovert. I will mix around. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I would want to say. So to move out from the chaotic world of meetings and client interactions to that of an absolute serenity, I'm sure is a process. Was this shift easier for you, though? So yeah, it was a process. Being in sales and marketing and being in the industry for so many years, there is so much comfort because you are at a position where you gone through that whole initial days of struggle where you're learning new things of course that we are constantly evolving after that but that initial uh uphill battle to kind of understand the industry etc is not there so that's something that i was uh, uh, facing in the art stream when i came in so initially i there was the need for me to amount spend the amount of time that i needed to on art was phenomenal so i was always juggling along with my work on um, you know, practicing whether it was to do with sketching or doing rough canvases and um, experimenting on techniques and style, etc. So it continued for a long period of time. And uh, every time I would think about uh, quitting, I would, because there is so much to do. And the time, I was always operating under time constraints. I would like do a full-time job. And then at night, sometimes I would be painting from 10 to 12. Or sometimes over the weekends, I would just sit for hours together. So I always felt that I was like, really, there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I processed this decision for maybe around two years uh, because, uh, I mean, I was at a good position in an organization. I was leading a team and leading a business. Uh, so, you know, in some moments you do, do think, oh, am I ready to let this go? Uh, or I am I not? Uh, so, my, so my husband told me that, you know, I mean, I know you want to do this for sure. But uh, sleep over it and when you're ready, you will know. And I actually think that it was a very, very uh, good advice because I, I I did let it go. I kept working. I kept painting throughout. And um, when I made the shift, mm. it was uh, it, back in uh, 2018 uh, that I had actually gone for a, um, a meeting to Australia and Vietnam. There were some customers that I was supposed to meet and I bagged a lot of contracts. Right before the trip, I had an exhibition in Bombay. Um, and then I was like really slogging because I had to get ready for the exhibition and soon after I was supposed to within one week supposed to fly out and you know be ready with all my high profile customer meetings etc so I was operating under a lot of pressure I went and I came back and then suddenly it was like okay but why am I doing this maybe I should just take a 
it was very sudden at that juncture it was very abrupt i just walked into the office one fine day within a month of coming back and i told my boss that you know i'm decided to quit so obviously uh, and after learning that i was not taking up something else so my uh, business head and my head of transaction banking called me and like who at this juncture takes decisions like these and um, i mean you are actually doing a disservice to yourself and a lot of those things but at that moment i have to say i was fearless mm. i was fearless i did not think about the consequences at all and i just went ahead so so that shift that you're talking about i didn't feel it at the time of decision making eventually there are certain things that you realize oh this is a mess or that is a mess that's a different issue and that's about acceptance of the new way of life but i think i was very fearless I love that you use the word fearless because when we think about change it's mostly the fears that stop us right uh fear of the unknown of the uncertainty and it is my experience too that I had to overcome such fears overcome my ego before I took a decision and it took me 2 years to do that so looking back at your journey what kind of fears did you have to work on a lot of things i would say a lot of things um first and foremost i would say you know when i talk about fear uh, the from fear to fearless is also a journey right so where, at the time when i was working with the, with the bank and uh, handling a lot of portfolio, big portfolio and the salary was coming in you know i mean we are used to this i have always worked uh, yeah. i have been very independent i have lived alone for many years i have never asked anybody for money so i mean exactly like you we are used to a particular way of operating and uh, we are perceived in a particular way so all those aspects of course are there but the time that i was going through this transition um, there was a lot of activity happening in my my life professionally and personally and uh, it it did push me to to a situation where i felt that i needed to kind of reflect on a lot of things and it it somehow helped me in this transition because i uh, when i started painting you know and i used to tell my mentor that uh, the fear was that will my painting sell uh, if i make this shift and i leave such a lucrative career if i go to the other side what would it be and i think he he's, he was a great mentor because the way he he explained to me he said that you are painting for yourself you know sale is incidental and you have to learn this because if you paint in anxiety of making your work in a way that it should get sold then you are actually not true to the process and uh, art is not for the person you're selling it to art is for yourself right. uh, it, it is it is your own meditation it is your own journey so i mean he drilled it in my head so much over a period of time and uh, and to tell you the truth he would also tell me that you know arti i don't want you to quit your job because when you quit your job it becomes a source of money and then it could actually hamper you painting without uh, having the baggage of oh, there is no money coming in i mean that that's one vertical that i went through i mean leaving that job second the financial security which i have always lived in i started working right after my college my mba uh, so that of course i went through and um, and for the longest time after i quit uh, i made the decision after making the decision initially i was like uh, oh suddenly i mean my 12 13 hours would just go away at work and then traveling etc and suddenly i had this long day and um, i mean how do you structure your day you know what to do but how do you structure your day little bit of actually learning how to manage my time by myself setting my own goals and you know whatever vision i had had at that point in time how do i go forward so uh, i mean those were some things that i did struggle with and um, and also times where you see not it's not art is not something like which is commodity right which sells every day that today i will go and sell x number of this or y number of that so literally coming from hardcore hardcore sales background and suddenly you move into no customer interaction no external interaction uh, no meeting people sitting in the studio and just painting uh, it did happen and there were times when i would be like oh my god i would call people uh, you know sometimes and it i went through that phase and then it came to a situation where i sit in my studio now and actually my phone is usually on silent because i feel that um, if i'm talk- talking on the phone it will interrupt my thought process so it's it's been a journey and uh, if you're passionate it gives you this uh, strength and courage and that's what could make you fearless right i mean the courage to be able to do something that i think is beyond your comfort zone something that you didn't you couldn't fathom that you can do i right. think so that that i feel uh, is what passion results in fearlessness okay so are you happy with the change that you've embraced absolutely i am 
I'm absolutely happy because uh, I strongly believe that we live once and uh, life is not about only having everything working out the way you plan. Uh, for my own self, I can vouch for it that whatever I plan, that's not how it has turned out to be. But it doesn't mean that it's not right or it was not good. I'm very happy and I also felt that if if not, since I always wanted to do, you know, let the life of an artist and paint, I, I used to feel that how about, you know, I start my day with painting and there is no end time. I can just go on painting, just go on painting and just go, how about that? And I'm able to live that life right now. You know, there is nobody come who stops me. There is nobody who changes what I have planned for my uh, journey. But I mean, if not now, then when? I mean, I have the energy now. I feel the passion for it now. I know that I can stretch and do so much so, I mean, absolutely, I, I'm glad and I think I'm privileged that actually I had the opportunity and the courage to, to do this. So, Superb. So, for all the people who are watching today, what kind of a message do you want to give them? I would say that um, it's very important to have a vision. I mean, a very large vision, something that, of course, puts you out of your comfort zone. But at the same time, uh, you know, setting goals, short-term goals. Uh, because what happens when we go through this whole emotional turmoil, when we are in the process, because we encounter a lot of roadblocks or things that slow you down, things not working out, we tend to forget the vision and we tend to start getting derailed. But when we set smaller goals and continue to work towards the vision and keep revisiting the vision, because that also gets amended, uh, it makes it much more, uh, much more rewarding as a process. And you feel that you are, so I feel that that's uh, something that vision and goals Second is, I think, um, also inner journey. I think it's also whenever you pick up your passion, uh, we always uh, think of it in an ideal manner. But it is not necessarily uh, just that bit. There is the other side to it, which also um, pushes you to look within. Uh, so I think for me, like meditation, workouts, etc., have really helped. Uh, and I would say that, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually a, a nourishment for your mind. So that's the other thing I would like to say. And third, I would say that we have to unlearn what we have learned. Right? So I think that's also a very important aspect that one, one has to keep in mind throughout. Thank you so very much for giving us your time. And thank you so much for inviting me. I would wish everybody who's watching this all the best to actually pursue their passion and, uh, uh, you know, just jump, in, jump into it and uh, the universe will bring it together. That's it from both of us. Thank you so very much for watching. If you want to reach out to Aarti, you want to explore her paintings, I will leave the link to her Instagram account in the description below. You may connect with her over there. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button and share it with your friends and I'll see you next week. Until then, take good care of yourself. Bye. <laughs> You're done with the formal stuff.